Hi everyone, Barry here from Matusa Crafts. Thank you for joining me today and thank you for joining me for the February Stamp Around UK video hop. This month's theme is romance and I am going to be showing you how to create this lovely self-close gift box to pop some nice chocolates in or any gift um, which will fit in it basically. But it's a really nice, it's a nice size to pop a nice bag of um, chocolates in it and... I will show you later on, but obviously you will pinch this together and it opens and, cl and closes on its own. That ribbon is just there for decoration. Okay, so this is what I'm going to show you how to make. I will be using um, the lovely True Love Designer Series paper, so which is this gorgeous black and white paper. Um, it's got some, one side is some really nice floral side and the other side is a pattern. So you've got some nice florals and then some nice simple patterns and I love the fact that it's black and white because it allows you to be able to to color it as well as you will see in the video okay that one there and I've seen a piece of paper which I've decided to use for this project is this one right here as well as using the true love designer series paper I will also be using some real red cardstock I'll be using some real red blends, so a light and a dark, even though I would only be using the light, but they come in a combo pack, so light and a dark. And I will be using the Playful Alphabet dies, which is these right here, as well as the Stitch Shapes dies and the Layering Oval dies um, to create the sentiment. Obviously, you will, I will be using some basic stuff, so you would need some scissors. Uh, the ribbon I'm using as well is this one here, which is a white whisper white or whisper white ribbon, seam binding ribbon. I'll be using a little bit of that. Obviously, basic stuff: glue, scissors, some dimensionals. Um, the gems I'm using are the real red basic jewel gems as well. So it's very real red, black and white, very very romance kind of, kind of colours. Um, Valentine's colours, obviously that's coming up very soon and that's why I've decided to do this project for you. Okay, so let's crack on and let's show you how to create this box. First thing you need to do is you need to cut yourself some real red cardstock down to size. So this is measuring eight and a half centimetres by six centimetres, which is 21.5 centimetres by 15.2. We're also going to be using the Simply Scored board here as well and we're going to just do some scoring so we need to pop this in so it's along the short edge along the top here and we need to score this at one inch and at five inches we then want to turn it around onto the long edge and we then want to score this at four inches and at eight inches Whilst you're on this long edge, you want to then take it at two inches and then just score down to the first score line. And you want to repeat that over at six inches. Over here. Okay, so that's that one right there. And we are done with that scoring. We now need to put some diagonal scoring in. And what you will need for this one here is a foam mat and a ruler and all you want to do is from this score line here so this little t-junction one here you want to take it down to this cross down here and then from that t-junction down to this one here that one down to here and this one down to the end part here so just grab your ruler and you'll need to have this on some kind of mat which will allow you to put a bit of pressure in and then just line the two corners up and then just gently score and then do that the other side as well and we'll do it over here Just be careful on this one here when you get to the end part because if you come off it and you push too hard you're going to pop a hole or dent it. So it's probably better just to stop a little bit earlier 
just so that you don't mark the edge. Just a little bit of a tip for you there. So there you go. You've now got our scored bit of card. So we will, before we do anything else with that one there, we're gonna take our design a series bit of paper and we're gonna take our trimmer and we're just gonna cut two squares measuring three and a half by three and a half. So I've cut my design a series bit of paper down to three and a half by seven. So I'm just gonna halve this now and just make this into two squares, three and a half by three and a half. Just pay attention to your pattern because obviously if you want it to line up later on, I would say we want it to go in this way as it's on the box. So it, the pattern the pattern flows. So just pay attention to where you've cut it and what side goes what so that the whole pattern carries on. Okay, it's entirely up to you, but I would just just my recommendation for you. What we're going to do now is we're just going to colour these. So I'm just going to take a scrap bit of paper, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my real red light, and I'm just going to colour in the hearts, not the hearts, the roses. So I use the brush end, and I'm just going to spot colour all of the roses on this pattern paper. And there we go, we've got those two pieces coloured like that, and we'll just put them back together just to match that design back up again, like so. Okay, just so we know when we cut it, it's gonna go on to our paper the correct way around, whatever way we want to do it, okay? So whilst we've got our pattern paper like here, what we wanna do is we want to pop a mark on it okay so this is we want to do this it's three and a half so half of three is one and a half so it's going to be at one and three quarter inches and i just want to pop a mark on this on one side so i'm just going to pop a mark, pencil mark there at one and three quarters of an inch and i'm going to do the same on this one here And then from that mark which I've made, I'm then going to then score, or I can just, I'm then going to cut, not score, from that mark to the corner here. And then repeat it on the opposite side, from that corner, from that mark up to the corner, like that okay put those to one side and then we'll do the same here so I've got my pencil mark here so pencil mark to the opposite corner and the same thing pencil mark to the corner That's that. So what we can do now is we can pop these into our grid, like that. And because we've followed that pattern on, everything flows quite nicely. So what we can do is we can go ahead and we can stick that down now and then we can then go ahead and do all of the cutting and folding and burnishing, okay.
Good. So there we go. We've got our designer series paper there now stuck onto our um pre our scored bit of real red real red cardstock. And um, so what we can do now as well is you would want to cut yourself out with using your some of your scraps and some whisper white, you would want to cut yourself out some an oval, stitched oval and a scalloped oval. So using the stitch shapes and the layering oval dies. So the layering, the stitch shape one I have used the, depending on what way you want to go at the second, um, second up from the smallest or third down from the largest. So, but it's that one right there, which I've used. And for the scalloped oval, Again, I've used on, once you layer them up into their two patterns, you've got the ones which has got the larger dies on it. And I will be using the, again, the second largest from the, from the, the second up from the smallest or the third down from the, from the largest. So it's that one, which I'm doing right there. And all you want to do is you want to cut those two out right here. You would also want to grab your, obviously I've gone for um, XOXO, so for my greeting on it. So I'm using the Playful Alphabet dies, and I've taken the X, and it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. Where is it? There. X there, and the O over here. Now one of the good things about this, you think to yourself, how, do, how are you going to get them all back in again? One of the great things, what they've actually done, they've actually marked, got a black line around all of the letters. I haven't done that. This is how these come pre-printed pre, pre on this sheet. So you know and can quite easily see that if you are missing um, any dies or what ones you've taken out or at least where they go back in. Otherwise, it'll be a nightmare to put these back in. So this is a great thing which I've done with this particular set and you've got the black outlines right here. So loving that. So grab your XO, XO. And you will then make, and I've gone ahead and I've gone and die cut those in black. So we've got XO, which is for hugs and kisses, apparently. And that there. And then, so you would then just want to stick that to that there. And then you're then going to, when sticking your letters down, just a little bit of a tip, start with the two centre ones. Get them in the centre, like that. And once you're happy with the two centre ones, then stick your outer ones on. Otherwise, if you start with the outer ones and you're too far in or too far out, then it could throw the whole thing. So stop. when you're doing this, try and start with the centre ones and then stick your outer ones to the correct spacing, like that. So, just like magic, here's one I did earlier on. We can then go ahead and then stick this to the scalloped real red piece of paper. Like so. And then we can then just set that to one side for when we come to the decoration very soon. So that can be setting up and getting nice and stuck now. Okay. Put my lid on my glue for a moment. I'm going to grab my bone folder. So we're going to move back onto the self-closed box here. So what we want to do is we want to fold and burnish some of them. So I'm going to fold and burnish that one here. I'm going to fold and burnish the middle one. And fold and burnish the outer one and the top one. We do the middle ones and these ones here when we've, because um, obviously we'll be cutting down here. We do these ones in a moment once we've actually want to construct the box. So we've gone and folded the that one, that one, the middle, and the outer. Okay. Now you want to grab yourself some snips, and you want to cut. these center pieces right here. And I'm just gonna just work something out for a moment. I can't remember what it is. I'm just gonna cut them all down. Like that. And 
and you want to make sure you keep this one straight as well. We're going to keep this one straight. And we will then, I'm going to do a big, to try and match this score line over this side here. And I will also then take this one off like that. So that's my tab. The reason I haven't done this just yet is the fact that I want to work out in a second. So if I look at my diagram, I'm going to keep two of them rectangle to start off with because it will help in a moment once coming to close the box and we don't do not cut down the center one here what we're going to do is we're going to then just fold this one over here fold and burnish fold that one over and then just push it down and then this will then pop itself up fold and burnish and then do the one exactly the same, the opposite side. Fold that one over, burnish, fold that one over, and it will actually pop up, and then burnish. Good. Now we can then pop some glue on this end part here. And stick it down. Okay. And now that naturally goes into, it, it forms its shape. Now we put those score lines in. All you want to do here is you want to pop some glue on these at the bottom here. So I've read left two of them square, because if you pop the two which are square, you can either pop the two which are square on the inside, and it helps naturally, I think, just keep that, that box solid. So two of them I, I didn't notch in. So, and obviously you wanna do one where you keep it as a rectangle, then do one where you wanna then notch it in, then do another one where you don't notch it and then do the final one. So you wanna do alternate. And then that will just help it. You can either go on the outside, pop them in, and then go on the outside so you can then get a nice clean bottom, or you can then pop it on the inside but it depends on how you do it. So it's entirely up to you. I'm gonna go on the inside because I think it just helps form the box. And I'm just gonna pop four big dollops of glue there. And then I will then fold these in and fold that over on itself. It may be handy now just to pop a bone folder in that and just push down a second onto that base, just so that glue sets up on the bottom. Good. So now that's now constructed, we will now take our sentiment. I'm gonna just grab some dimensionals. And I'm just gonna put four dimensionals on the back of this. And then that there can go. So just wanna pick your side. I'm going to go with that as being my front because it's got more red colouring there. And then that can then go on the top and then centralise that in like so. Grab myself some of my red rhinestones, the um, red rhinestone basic jewels. And keep this nice and simple. We're just going to just pop three of these. So I'll just pop one in the middle right here. and then one on either side. Like that, okay. It's good, so you can either leave it like that if you want to, because that there is now a self-closing box. So you just need to just squeeze it and then it opens itself up and then it closes itself 
like that and like that. Or if you want to, you can grab yourself some of the ribbon. So as I said, this is the crinkle seam binding um, Whisper White ribbon. And I may not have enough. I may have to work to up another one. We will see. And this is just purely for decoration here. So let's just take that off. But it might just add another another finishing touch to your box. So I'm just going to bring this over. So that slides on and off. And there we have it. There is my self close box. Suitable. So if you grab yourself some nice little indoor chocolates, got these obviously they're, they're, they're Easter eggs, but they work quite nicely because they're red, so they fit with this. And it's a nice size to pop a whole bag in. And that goes in. Like that. A nice way, rather than giving somebody a bag of chocolates, you can then give somebody a nice little box. Decorate it up. Really nice, lovely Valentine's Day romance. Um, but this box can be easily adapted to any occasion. Just change your designer series paper, change your colour cardstock, change your sentiment on there. You can use it for absolutely anything. I think it's a really nice, cute little box. Okay, so be sure to check out everyone else's links down below in the description and hop along. Um, and we hope you enjoyed this month's romance theme, Stamp Around UK, Blog Hop. Thank you everyone for watching. Take care and we will be back with you again very soon. Bye for now. Bye.